Born into poverty in southern India, Rani Hung was seven years old when she was sold into slavery. They did not see me as a seven-year-old child. They saw me like a piece of property to be able to exploit. Her childhood ended with a broken promise. After her family fell on hard times, they asked a prominent woman from their village to help take care of Rani. Months later, that woman sold her to child trafficking recruiters in another state. It got to the point that I literally just cried and cried and cried. And all I knew is that I was now with my mother. Ronnie says her trafficker used child slaves in his cement factory as maids and even prostitutes. She was given drugs, kept in a cage, and beaten daily. Couldn't really walk properly because when I was held captive, so my legs had identified. Ronnie's declining health prompted her trafficker to sell her into an illegal international adoption, which finally brought her to a loving home in Washington state. But this is my adopted mother. Her adoptive mother had no idea what she'd been through. Ronnie was eight years old. As an adult, I, I researched this issue and that's when I said, hey, I don't want another mother to be separated from her seven-year-old little girl. My life in India was happy, but very poor. Decades later, Rani would share her story of survival on the world stage. My childhood ended at the age of seven. Eventually named as special advisor to the United Nations. We think Washington state is so removed, this only happens in India, but that's far from the truth. According to the human trafficking nonprofit, the Polaris Project, in 2021, more than 10,000 reports were made to the U.S. National Human Trafficking Hotline. In the Pacific Northwest, regional data from the Department of Homeland Security shows they've interviewed 170 potential victims of human trafficking in the past year alone. They are, may not be getting paid, so we see them with places that no running water, and so we see that and a person working 16 hour days with no breaks uh, and then often being abused at the, sa the same time. Per DHS, the most common industries where you find forced labor are hospitality, food service, domestic work and agriculture. Last year, Ronnie reached out to the Facing Race team for help spreading awareness and strengthening the laws surrounding forced labor here in Washington. We introduced her to State Senator Manka Dingra. While I was aware of this issue around uh, forced labor and I knew it was a problem, I didn't necessarily have anyone telling me that there's a solution. So when I met Ronnie and saw her experience and her passion and, um, you know, she provided a solution which makes sense. As a first strategy. Together, Ronnie and Senator Dingra crafted legislation asking large corporations doing business in Washington to examine their supply chains and verify that forced labor isn't used to produce their products. So it really is a way of just telling the consumers, hey, these are the companies that have certified that they're not using forced labor, and these are the companies that have not. But under the proposed legislation, companies that choose not to disclose won't face any consequences. Do you think down the road a mechanism to hold these companies accountable, penalize them, is something that you see as a necessary part of eradicating this problem in Washington? I expect our business community not to be happy. Um, and no one likes being told that they have to uh, do more work, but it really is going to be a wait and see approach. For now, it's enough for Ronnie. Who knows? Good things take time. Ronnie finally <laughs> felt the arms of the woman she'd been dreaming about. 21 years after her kidnapping, she went home to India and reunited with her birth mom. When I met my mom and heard the cries of her and my brothers and sisters, and when I felt like somebody has to speak up about this, somebody has to do something. For Facing Race, I'm PJ Randawa.